we were taught that using the past is a good predictor of the future. Today, with global climate change, that's simply no longer possible. So we need to have new ways of being able to understand what will happen. That means new models. Models must be informed by data. Data is a digital watershed. This is really the first generation in which data is not, by and large, taken by hand. It comes from a computer. It comes from a sensor. So it begins data, much like the explosion in digital pictures. Our research project with Microsoft focused initially on the Russian River as the digital watershed. There were interested parties. The water resources were challenging in terms of allocation for people, for fish, for farming and the groups all were looking for innovative solutions. The issue with building a, a digital watershed is that there is a lot of data now out there. So we went to talk to Jim Gray at Microsoft Research because uh, his, his experience in the database community and applying databases to scientific problems was, was really germane to a lot of what we were trying to do. And through Jim we met Catherine and, and Catherine started to get involved. Her background in hydrology, combined with her background in computer science, enabled her to really cross the divide in helping to interpret a lot of the science needs and science questions into the computer science and, and exactly what did that mean and what, we sh what should we provide as the infrastructure. The Russian River watershed has numerous land uses in it. The vineyards expand in the watershed, water use in, in the Russian River Basin has shifted, demands in the population of increase have shifted, and so they're really approaching a problem of how are they going to provide the water they need to grow their vines and their grapes at the same time of serving the other needs, such as restoring migratory fish. One of the really nice aspects of, of having the data in the sort of architecture that we do and, and having it out in the cloud and having all of the infrastructure to make it very easy to look at that data and to walk through that data and, and reorganize that data very quickly um, is that you can sort of over coffee ask a question and wonder about whether or not a particular phenomena is occurring and, and actually do the early investigation and, and figure out whether it, whether it looks like it is or isn't. I could do these calculations myself in the matter of hours using five to ten different stream gauges, five different precipitation stations, and have an ability to understand what I was doing, check the quality of the data, all through the data cube rather than the original source on the web. The observations of the dips and flow rate of the Russian River have encouraged the State Water Resources Control Board to come back to the the vineyards to the water managers in the Russian River Basin to ask them to think about how you could do things differently. And so they are in fact rethinking how they do frost protection for agricultural crops. Uh, part of the analysis will be do you have off-stream storage of water that you can draw upon rather than taking it directly from the river? Do you institute better meteorological measurements to really predict will it in fact be a frosty morning through working with Catherine and with Jim Hunt and, and with our team, we were able to bring together all the expertise that was needed to understand their problems, formulate the questions from them, bring the data to bear, and then come back through, all the way through, with the answers to, the, to those questions. We've been running the watershed and maintaining the watershed now for, I think it's about four years. And the collaboration is growing We, as an artifact of simply having data in one place in which you can ask the questions. We started an engagement with the National Marine Fisheries folks, which has led to some interesting work looking at frost dips. Um, it's led to some interesting work trying to link the digital watershed with maps for visualization. So work on, both on the science side and on the computer science side. Um, it's also led to other engagements with other scientists. We're using the same base technology in work with the National Soil Carbon Group and with the FluxNet Group. What I really love about my job and the, and the work in the, in the Berkeley Water Center is that I think that actually I'm sitting at the right time and the right place to help change how science is done. Right? Taking data and the problem of handling data off the table, making it easy can inform a class of discussions and inform a class of policy studies so that we're moving from antidote 
oh, well, I was walking the river and I think I saw, to data, looking at 2001, seeing frost dips, and knowing that they were there.